Hello, you are listening to Lesson 6 in the Magic of yod heh vav -Heh Adonai. In this final lesson, we will diverge from the thread we have followed till now and examine an entirely different use of the canticle. This time we will not be using it to create anything. Instead, we will use the canticle as a tool for the raising of our own conscious awareness. The canticle expresses five distinct levels of consciousness, which can be correlated to the four hermetic elements plus the fifth, aether or akasha. In the ascending order, which we shall be using, these levels are as follows. The first level corresponds to the final he of yod heh vav -He and the element earth. This is Malkuth and your personal life circumstance. This is your conscious awareness as it normally exists within your physical body. From the Malkuth perspective of the final he, you reach upwards to Kether, Ani, and pull the light all the way downward into your body, and you perform this operation from within your physical body. This is the perspective from which you've learned to practice the magic of yod heh vav -Heh adonai through the preceding lessons. The second level corresponds to the Vav of yod heh vav -Heh and the element air. This is Tifereth and your individual self. The experience of the individual self is best described as one of detachment from direct involvement in the personal chaos of normal life. From the Tifereth perspective of the Vav, the individual self looks down upon the mundane life circumstances and perceives them in a broader context. When the individual self draws down the light from Kether, it is not as far an upward reach, and when the light descends into the Vav, there is the same sense of completion and empowerment similar to that experienced from the Malkuth perspective when the light descends into the final He. After the light reaches and fills the Vav, the individual self willfully pushes it further downward into the final He of Malkuth. In this way, it is the individual self that directly empowers the mundane, personal self. The third level corresponds to the first He of yod heh vav -Heh and the element water. This is Bina and your greater self. From the Bina perspective of the first He, the greater self looks down upon the countless number of individual selves that it projects into the stream of space-time, along with the mundane life circumstances of each individual self's incarnations, and perceives them in the broadest of contexts. The greater self is the eternal mental body, or core spirit, that fills our particular being. The greater self can focus its attention on any single individual self and its incarnation, or focus itself throughout all its individuals simultaneously. The greater self is a vastly inclusive and fluid level of awareness. When the greater self draws down the light from Kether, it is right at hand, hardly a reach at all, except in the symbolic sense, and when the light descends into the first he, there is the same sense of completion and empowerment that is experienced from the Tifereth perspective when the light descends into the Vav, and from the Malkuth perspective when the light descends into the final he. After the light reaches and fills the he, the greater self willfully pushes it further downward into one or all of its projected Vavs, or individual selves and from there each individual self pushes it downward still further into their mundane incarnations. In this way, it is the greater self who causes the individual self to empower the mundane personal self. The fourth level corresponds to the Yod of yod heh vav -Heh and the element fire. This is Chokmah, the highest level of greater self. It is difficult to describe what differentiates between Chokmah and Kether, or unity. In fact, the ancient Kabbalists described their closeness with the symbol of the Yod, saying that the uppermost point of the Yod was actually Kether, and only the downward stroke was Chokmah. This symbolism provides an important clue in that it attributes the downward movement and direct action of a pin stroke to Chokmah, while reserving the passive point of origin for Kether. In essence, Chokmah is the unity of all the greater selves. Chokmah is the unity of parts whereas Kether itself is a singular, completely integral whole. From the Chokmah perspective of the Yod, the Chokmah self looks down upon the infinite number of greater selves that fill eternity, along with all the individual selves that they project into the stream of space-time and the mundane life circumstances of each individual self's incarnations. The Chokmah self perceives all these parts as parts of its own self. The Chokmah self can focus its attention on any single greater self 
or focus itself throughout all of its graders simultaneously, just as we can focus on our little finger alone or all of our fingers at once. The chokmah self doesn't draw down the light from kether per se. Instead, the chokmah self ignites kether, and the light is immediately at hand. Chokmah is the downward movement of the light of all potential into actualization. When the light fills the yod, the sense of completion and fulfillment is overwhelming beyond words. The chokmah self then pushes the light downward into the realm of the graders and on down, eventually reaching the material incarnations. In this way, it is the Hachma self who causes the greater self to empower the individual self, who in turn empowers the mundane personal self. The fifth and ultimate level corresponds to the Ani, or I Am, and to the Akasha. This is Kether, the unity, the one self. In Kether itself there is no experience of light, for it becomes clear that what is perceived from below as light is in truth consciousness. From the perspective of unity, everything is composed of this consciousness, of the essence of the unity itself. Thus Kether is a whole thing, not a mere unity of parts. It is potential and actualization simultaneously. From the Ketheric perspective of the Ani, the unitary consciousness emanates into Chakma and from there into the entire realm of being. When it reaches Chakma, it is then directed as light by the Chakma self into whatever direction is desired. So, these are the five levels of awareness symbolized within the magic of yod heh vav adonai Canticle. When the light strikes Malkuth with force and the Adonai rainbow-hued light erupts, it arises all the way back up to Kether. When the canticle is performed from the Malkuth perspective that you've already learned, then the sensation of empowerment elicited by the Adonai eruption is felt primarily at the Malkuth level. But when the canticle is performed from the Tifereth perspective, as the individual Vav self, then the sensation of empowerment is felt at that level more so than at the Malkuth level. And when it's performed from the Bina perspective of the greater self, the empowerment is felt at that level primarily, and so on. At each level, the rainbow-hued cloud of Adonai light is sent outward with the recitation of Rabono Shalalam from the perspective of that level, and is returned to that same level. In other words, when you perform the operation from the Tifereth perspective, it is with your Tifereth body that you expel the accumulated light and your Tifereth body is where the light returns to once it has touched the edges of the infinite universe. So, on to the practice itself. I will explain the process of ascent using the canticle and also describe a few alternate exercises to experiment with. To begin, we will perform the canticle short form three times, from the normal Malkuth perspective which you are by now very familiar with. However, there will be one difference as follows. We will start with three repetitions of Ani. As you say the Ani, or I Am, sense your entire physical body and make this your center of self-awareness. Only when it comes to speaking the canticle itself should the Ani raise your awareness to your Kether. So our first three Anis will focus our awareness into our Malkuth and the fourth Ani, which begins our recitation of the canticle itself, raises our awareness to our Kether. The point here is that it must be from Malkuth that we raise our awareness to our Kether. It is from our Malkuth that we must perform the entire operation. Very well. Let's begin now with our three Anis and then move directly into performing the canticle from the Malkuth perspective. Ani. Ani. Ani, Ani, Yod He Vav He Adonai, Ribbon of Shellolam. Ani, 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 
yod he Adonai Ribbon of Shell Olam Amen. Ani Ani Ani. Ani yod he va he Adonai Ribbon o shell olam Amen Wonderful. Now we will move up one level and perform the same sequence but from the Vav or Tifereth perspective of the individual self. While you are saying the initial three Anis, you must focus your awareness upon your individual self. The simplest way to do this is to visualize yourself standing atop a cloud, looking down in a fairly detached manner upon your everyday life. The main distinguishing feature of this perspective is that of detachment from the immediate involvement in all the emotions and events of your mundane life. With the three Anis, you must make this body the central focus of your awareness. It must be your I Am. When it comes time to begin the canticle itself, you must raise your awareness from your Tifereth to your Kether. As you bring the light down from Kether, pay close attention to the sensations elicited as it strikes and fills your Vav. Also notice how it feels when the Adonai light arises to the Vav. How it feels to radiate this light from the Tifereth perspective when you recite the Rabono Shalom, and finally, how it feels when this light, having rebounded off the edges of the infinite universe, returns to your Tifereth self. Very well, let's begin now with our three Anis, and then move directly into performing the canticle from the Tifereth perspective. Ani. Ani 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 Yod he va he Adonai Ribbon o shell olam Ani 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 Yod he va he Adonai Ribbon o shell olam Ani 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 Yod he va he Adonai Ribbon o shell olam Amen. Wonderful. When you practice this apart from this recording, you should feel free to increase the number of initial Anis as it suits you. Keep repeating the Ani until you are firmly rooted in the Tifereth perspective. Now let's do that one more time from the Tifereth perspective. Ani 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 
Adonai, Ribbon of Shell Alam. Amen. Ani, Ani. Adonai, Ribbon of Shell Alam. Amen. Ani, Ani. Adonai, Ribbon of Shell Alam. Amen. Wonderful. Now we will move up another level and perform the same sequence but from the first He or Bina perspective of the Greater Self. While you are saying the initial three Anis, you must focus your awareness upon your greater self. The simplest way to do this is to visualize yourself standing atop a small planetoid in deep space. You stand as a giant upon a very, very small asteroid, and all around you see countless stars, each with its own planetary system. Each of these stars is a part of you, and each is given sustenance from your own self. These are your individual selves, your vavs. Once you have achieved this perspective, you must identify the individual star that projects your corporeal self, your own Malkuth, for that is where you will be sending the descending light during the canticle itself. With the initial Anis, you must focus your awareness in your greater self and make this your I Am, but you must also be sure that you are still connected to your own Tifereth and Malkuth. It is from here that you will reach up to Kether as you begin speaking the canticle itself. As the light descends into and fills your first hay, pay close attention to the sensations this elicits. Once it does fill your greater self, you must then direct it downward into your own individual self. On its return upward as the Adonai, again pay close attention to the sensations this elicits in your greater self. Notice also how it feels to radiate the swirling cloud of Adonai light as you speak the Rabono Shalalam from the Bina perspective, and how it feels when, having touched the Divine, it returns to your Bina self. Very well. Let's begin now with our three Anis, and then move directly into performing the canticle from the Bina perspective. Ani 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 Yod He Vahe Adonai Ribbon of Shell Alam Amen. Ani 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 Adonai, Ribbon of Shell Alam. Amen. 
Ani 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 Yod he va he Adonai Ribbon o shell olam Wonderful. Now let's do that one more time. Ani 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 Yod he va he Adonai Ribbon no shell olam Ani 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 Yod he va he Adonai Ribbon no shell olam Ani 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 Yod he va he Adonai Ribbon no shell olam Excellent. Now we will move up another level and perform the same sequence but from the Yod or Chokmah perspective. While you are saying the initial three Anis, you must focus your awareness upon your Chokmah self. The simplest way to do this is to visualize yourself standing amid a universe filled with nothing but particles of light. Each of the infinite number of light particles is a greater self. You will know automatically which exact particle of light is the greater self that connects to your particular incarnated body. The procedure is exactly the same as before, so I will not go into the usual minute detail. Let's begin now. Ani 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 Yod he va he Adonai Ribbon no shell olam Ani 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 Yod he va he Adonai Ribbon no shell olam Ani Ani 
Ani Ani Yod He Vahe Adonai Ribbon of Shell Olam Excellent. Now we will move up to the ultimate level and perform the same sequence, but from the Ani, or Kethric, perspective of the unity. While you are saying the three initial Anis, you must focus your awareness upon your Kethric self. The simplest way to do this is to create the feeling that you are the Kethric light itself, that you are all consciousness, all being, all of existence. This is your body, your I am. The procedure here is not exactly the same as before, since you are now the source of light and you draw nothing down. Instead, the canticle, when performed from the Catholic perspective, is an operation entirely devoted to the emanation of light. Taken to its fullness, performing the canticle from the Catholic perspective mimics the cyclic breath of the universe itself as it emanates into existence and then returns to its source only to emanate again, and so on. Let's begin now. Ani 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 Yod He Vahe Adonai Ribbon of Shell Olam Amen Ani 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 Yod He Vahe Adonai Ribbon of Shell Olam Ani 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 Yod He Vahe Adonai Ribbon of Shell Olam Excellent. Now we will perform one final recitation of the canticle from the normal Malkuth perspective in order to firmly ground us back into our normal mundane awareness. Ani 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 Yod He Vahe Adonai Ribbon of Shell Olam Very well. This ends the instructional portion of Lesson 6. Now I will discuss a few alternate approaches for you to experiment with and explore. In the preceding instructions, I indicated that you should guide the descending light down into your own Malkuth. This, however, is not your only option. From Tifereth, you can also guide the light down into any or all of your past incarnations. From Bina, you can guide the light down into any or all of your greater's manifest individuals. From Chokmah, you can guide the light pretty much anywhere you like. 
and from the unity you can emanate the light into the entire universe if you so choose. Another alternative is that you can truly follow the light down with your conscious awareness. For example, from Bina, you can descend with the light into Tifereth, sense your Tifereth body, and then descend with the light into your Malkuth and sense your Malkuth body. And as the Adonai light erupts and rises upwards, you can reascend with your conscious awareness until you reach the level from which you started. This has the effect of greatly integrating your various levels of self, unlike the method you've just performed, which merely opens the channels of light between these levels. A final alternative that I will mention is what I call breathing the unity. Here, you begin by working your way up to your kether by this following the steps you've just learned. Then you spend some time emanating your Ketheric light into the whole universe, then inhaling it back into yourself, and then emanating it anew, over and over, with each repetition of the canticle from the Ketheric perspective. Then you follow your emanation of light with your conscious awareness outward into the entire universe and back to your Kether, over and over. Given enough practice and facility with the magic of yod heh vav adonai this can be a sublimely powerful meditation. This ends Lesson 6, the final lesson in the magic of yod heh vav adonai I pray that you use this magic well and create much beauty in the world. This has been Ron Clark. My best to you. Ani 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 Yore Vahe Hotanai Ribon no shell on